Two new studies published today are revealing new insights into the effects of head impacts while playing sports like soccer and other sports. <laughs> uh, that one study focused on frequent soccer headers by amateur players and was able to scan whether trauma was visible in a part of the brain that had not been examined in live patients before. Joining me now for tonight's interview is Dr. Michael Lipton, who led that study's research. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Tell us about this study. Uh, so in, in this study, we looked at adult amateur soccer players. They were from the uh, greater New York City area. And we looked at the relationship of soccer heading with two different features. One is things we could detect in the brain with MRI, and another is cognitive function. And we found that those who did very high uh, levels of heading, like more than a thousand times uh, over the past year for many years, had abnormalities in their brain and abnormalities in cognitive function. Now, that in and of itself is not actually new. What's new about this study is that we examined a part of the brain out near the brain surface, uh, specifically where the surface of the brain has these grooves or fissures, and we are able to uh, see the, the pathology related to head impacts and the injury associated with them that's accumulating in those locations. That's an area of the brain that's never been examined in this context before because the tools did not exist until we uh, develop methods to do so. And we show that these areas of injury are actually, uh, in, at least in a substantial part, are what's driving worse cognitive function, specifically learning uh, in, in these young individuals. And because you're now able to, to examine areas that were not available before, does that mean you're able to, to see this developing as opposed to, as I understand it with CTE, the brain damage is only discoverable after the, pay, the, uh, the person is deceased? Right. So, so to be clear, th th I'm not saying that this is CTE. We are looking at young, healthy athletes. Uh, we are finding these things in living individuals. So, uh, whatever we are seeing, it's you know, it's it's at a much much earlier stage. And what we're able to do, though, is to see a lot of changes related to head impacts which have not been visible before. So we're really opening a window into a part of the brain that is affected related to these impacts uh, that, that has not been previously discoverable. And there was another um, study from Boston University that, that I gather is consistent with the research you've done? Yes, yeah, so the, the study which was published today in, uh, from Boston University in the journal Nature uh, was a different type of study. It looked at brain tissue from an autopsy, uh, and they were looking at changes in brain cells, like death of nerve cells and inflammation. But those findings actually are remarkably consistent with our findings for really two main reasons. One is that they are showing these changes not only in people who have CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, but also in individuals who had multiple head impacts but did not have uh, CTE. But in addition, the location in the brain where we're finding these changes uh, at the base of the what we call the sulcus, those fissures in the brain, is remarkably consistent between these changes seen uh, at autopsy and our changes, which are seen in life in people who are essentially healthy and functioning normally. So we have about 15 seconds left, Doctor. What is the practical uh, possibilities of these findings? So the practical possibilities are that this is an early form of injury and we need to understand it better to see what it holds for the future in these individuals.